All right. Um, thanks, Glenn. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're a brave man to do so. Um, there's a lot of people in, at this conference that know me, and uh, sorry. How's this? Better. Is this better? Okay, guys. So why are you here? What what do you want from this conference? Is is this conference just something that is going to give you an idea of what Microsoft's going to have out in the next couple of months or next year? Are you actually here to expand your horizons, get the interesting conversations going to get you to the next level in your career, in your life? What kind of sacrifices are you going to have to do to do that? I've certainly done a whole bunch of shooting myself in the leg and career sabotage, but on purpose. This conference has, for those that don't know, has a history. It may only be two years old or however many years, but it actually started with a whole bunch of other people that are excellent. And I promised Greg I'm, I was not going to be negative at all in this talk. Greg. Sorry, <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> um, but I did talk to uh, Greg about this, actually, too. Uh, Greg Young, um, who's, who's someone that I work with quite a bit. And, um, and Peter Hingens, who you've heard of, if you haven't heard of him before, through my lightning talk. So the history of this conference, actually, these people that are here uh, have been part of something called Alt.net, which was kind of disassembled after a number of people left to other industries um, for a number of reasons. There was a lot of frustration in terms of how Microsoft handled open source. And I'm actually very glad to see that that's turning around and that open source and concepts like that are being embraced. And, you know, I'm very critical of, of these approaches as well. I definitely see it as them being dragged by their hair to where the industry is. And that's not a fault of any people that are involved in, in, in open source at Microsoft or anywhere in Microsoft. That's, it's a very, very large company. And the same thing goes for Oracle. And it's actually a lot worse, although you don't see it, with companies like Apple. But all these large companies exist in a very old world way of working. They exist in a world that revolves around quarterly reports and sales. So when you are judging your career as to where it is and where you want it to be, you kind of have to realize the reality of what you're dealing with when you adopt a framework, when you adopt a stack. I'm a full stack developer in .NET. What does that mean? Is it like a deal with the devil? Or are you actually connecting with people like Glenn? Are you connecting to Scott Hanselman? Are you actually able to talk about these concepts with the detractors, the guys that went away from this pretty much? I'm still here, sort of. I still love .NET. I develop on a Chromebook, on Kubuntu, using Project Rider from JetBrains, because I love my C Sharp, and I love my refactoring. And I think it's one of the best things to do to get line of business applications developed responsibly and incredibly quickly. So I'm still, I'm, I still have a foot in the, in the water in .NET. But in terms of what I do at home, it's like I'm an open source vegan, like vegan level open source. I uninstalled everything proprietary. My whole family works on open source things. We have a number of Linux distros that we use. Now FreeBSD has a desktop environment. If you haven't heard of FreeBSD, look it up. It's one of the truest Unix platforms out there. And it's probably the, the dark horse that no one's seeing that's coming up right behind the success of open source and what Linux has done. So take a look at those things and see what's going on around you. 
There's a point of diminishing returns. I know a lot of, a, a lot of you I know for many, many years. Glenn already alluded to that. And you guys are experts. A lot of you guys are experts in .NET. And, and I know that I can rely on a, a whole bunch of you. If I give you a project, holy smokes, I'm going to get an amazing product that's written in C Sharp. And that follows all of the design things that I hold in high regard. But there's a point of diminishing returns. This is what I, re this is what I saw. What got me hooked on open source was uh, Greg Young and Git. Everyone was talking about TFS back in, you know, when it first came out, I think it was 05, because Visual Source Safe was so bad, it would just literally kill your code. I was at a client and we couldn't restore certain things that we needed to look at. We didn't touch this one part of, of, uh, of the solution for a couple of years, and I said, oh, let's add some functionality. Lo and behold, we try to restore stuff, and Visual Source Safe is corrupt. We cannot get it. Luckily, there was one person's computer that was in that office that still had on its hard drive the latest snapshot of, of that source code. So we got off lucky. But had that machine been repurposed, it would have cost tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. So you can see why I'm kind of at that point in time, why I was looking at, well, if the guys that are provided the solution are giving us the next thing, Microsoft giving us TFS, I was very skeptical. And rightfully so. Because what happens around that time, 05, Linus Torvalds writes, and Linus lives right here. I'm surprised he's not at this conference. He should be here, not me. If you really love Linux, if really Microsoft loves Linux, Torvalds should be up here, not me. Next year, maybe that'll happen. So Linus writes Git in one week. Awesome. Why is it awesome? Because it's simple. And so what happened is I got hooked. I looked at this a few years down the line, and I said, well, I actually want to be an expert in this. I want to like really learn the crap out of this. Like I want to put in my 10,000 hours as soon as possible to, so I can teach people about Git. And so that's what I did. I started answering stuff on Stack Overflow as a way to learn. I answered about 1,000 questions in a year or two, and I stopped using Stack Overflow. Because I learned enough to actually teach it, and I run a meetup about it, et cetera. The side effect of this was looking at what open source means. And when I wanted to do the exploratory testing of the newest version of Git, the easiest way for me to do that was to run, spin up a, a VM of Linux, Ubuntu at the time, compile it from source, and try it out. And what happened when I hit enter the first time that it was installed and compiled? Something that hasn't happened at all on my, on my, Linux exper uh, my Windows experience. As soon as that enter key made contact, the results of the history or whatever command that I did displayed instantaneously. I was immediately hooked. That level of performance is what was brought to me by open source. So in alt.net and all the open source stuff around .net, we kind of worked on top of Windows, et cetera, and we had Great frameworks as you know, in Hibernate, uh, Mono, all these really good initiatives. But at the base of it, you were still working with Windows, right? Which was a different way of developing things. It was, didn't have that Unix philosophy of b making small little things that work together well. So I was hooked. And at a certain point, I decided to never actually use Windows if I didn't have to, because I, not that I hated it, I actually, I actually prefer it. I actually really, really prefer it to Apple. I think Apple's just, you're, you're out of the pot into the fire. For a lot of people that are like, hey, we're alternate, we're using Macs. It's just another big company. You're not really that alt. You're like everyone else with an iPhone. So when I did, when I did this, I discovered like, holy smokes, these small little things done well 
can be so powerful. It was incredible. And I could do the same thing with C Sharp. I heard about Project Mono. Like, that's awesome. Wow, they, someone actually took Microsoft to task and said, this is an open specification that anyone could do that. And, and maybe Microsoft didn't think that anyone would. And we, and we got these guys that put that together. And they brought .NET and C Sharp and all the good stuff that you have to be run on anything, which was really, really awesome. The next thing that happened is that I realized that, you know what, it's actually not that hard to build things yourself. And I, I started challenging the dogma of why do you need to install a CI system? Why do you need JIRA to track, or TFS or whatever? Why do you need these things to track how far you're along in your sprint? Those are very good questions. And if anyone wants to actually see a really good presentation on this part, take a look at Eight Lines of Code by Greg Young, where he, ex where he wants to explicitly say, make the implicit explicit. And wow, what a change in, in, in outlook that is. It's absolutely fantastic. So I decided to throw away things like CI. I don't want Team City. I don't want Jenkins for tracking. I don't want. I don't want Jira. I don't want TFS. I think we can get those things for free with conventions. I think we already have enough. I think we already have enough powerful languages and platforms, the OSs themselves, to just have conventions to do these things. So I started a a meetup called Zero Tech where all we do is not use tools. We don't want a cargo cult. We want to realize that we're smart developers and that we can answer our own questions very well. And in fact, we're so smart that we could take a little bit of extra effort to make that available to the non-technical people, the business people. And through certain small little conventions like doing a search replace on an HTML template without any framework, forget a velocity, forget all these other things. I can actually show a business person an interface where they can author some automated specifications. It took me two hours to do that. And I'm a dumb guy, so you guys could do it in half the time. But we don't. There's this entitlement that we have currently. We have the junior senior development problem. We have guys that have started Ruby on Rails five years ago. And every year, they get onto a new project, and they're super fast. Man, do they get that solution out there. They don't have to worry about maintaining it, because they're long gone. But the resume, it says five huge, successful projects in a row. And they end up in a leadership position. And what kind of lessons are they teaching new people at that company? Do you think they ever utter the words integration by database? Who knows about integration by database? Who, who knows that? There's one guy, Richard, who I worked with, obviously knows that. Okay, not many other people know. There's one of these anti-patterns, right? Forms over data. You have one screen that writes the database and uses three or four tables. You have another screen that may use a subset and a couple of other tables. Not many people know that the shared tables may be interpreted differently. That because one screen is not actively developed on, that it falls behind. And so what do you have then? You have this horrible problem of bugs that come up after three months. Like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this other page has been writing this data. And these people have been overcharged for our product, right? So. I guess my point is, is that no matter where you go, you're going to have your problems. But the point of diminishing returns, like all the people that are .NET experts here that, that do excellent work, you can only get so much by staying in that platform. So I encourage you to go to other platforms, because there's a whole level of learning. For the same amount of time that you're going to spend doing yet another C-sharp thing, finding out about C-sharp 6, 
You know what? For me, 3.5 is fine. I think that's good enough. I think as, this, as soon as they put in link, that was awesome. I, I, could, I could care less about the rest, rest of the stuff. I'm fine. At that point, C Sharp is more powerful than so many more languages out there that I don't need it. I don't need any other stuff. Great, 6.0 is out. Awesome. Cool. I'm happy with mono on an older version. So take a look at other platforms. You, know, you don't have to be a tech vegan like me and absolutely move away from any proprietary stuff. But I encourage you to encourage the vegans around you because they're the canaries in the coal mine that are going to tell you about pitfalls of certain things. And they're going to be working outside of, they're going to be working outside of this quarterly reporting, this uh, capitalist driven way that organizations have to work to make sales and to be alive. That whole model, you know, this is one of the reasons I had this lightning talk earlier. That whole model um, doesn't facilitate open source that well, right? I mean, there's, there's exceptions, and companies make really good money off of open source in certain ways. Companies like Red Hat that do support for the whole open source stuff. So take a look at doing things the hard way. I encourage you to... Um, not always find the correct thing. Stick to something. Believe in something. Write the whole thing through, even, even though that you know halfway through it's a failure and a bad idea. Because you know what happens? If you actually take that to completion, and of course, don't, don't make anyone else suffer for it. Do it yourself. But what you're going to learn is what no one else could learn. That's going to be your unique journey. Just like me writing some crazy config stuff or recompiling a driver so that you know Kubuntu runs fine on my Chromebook. That's my journey. But when someone comes to me with a problem like that, I can help them. So if you want to do F sharp, fine. But do other stuff. Look at Bash on Windows now, right? That's that's a thing. That's pretty awesome. Look at these caveats of where you can be very influential and provide some niche thing. Each of you ha has a, a unique journey through technology. So keep going that way. Never doubt yourself. Do the unpopular thing. You will learn what no one else learned. That will be your, your greatest contribution to the community. That someone out there, like, hey, this guy is writing C Sharp on his Chromebook. That's pretty awesome. You know what that means? That opens stuff up for third world countries that can't live with a 50 gig install of Visual Studio, right? It's a 200 megabyte install. So you've opened up everything that you love about C Sharp to people that really need the work and that need to be exposed to the rest of the world so they can contribute. All of this poverty stuff can actually be answered. So the reason I'm a tech vegan is because of the amount of influence that I know in the end will happen. And it doesn't have to be everyone. But do support the guys that are doing that hard work. Tell your boss. Tell your company. Tell Microsoft. Tell Apple that these are worthwhile things because they give power to the people that have the least of it. So we're here at .NET Fringe because that word fringe. And if you really want to do that, go buy that word and call yourself a member of this community. Then do those things and encourage those that are doing it. And yeah, that's it. Thank you.